excited to be doing this webinar. Um, I'm going to give about four or five minutes for everybody to get logged in. Some people just signed up and I'm excited to have you. I can't wait to share what God has put on my heart in this season. This is such a strategic webinar. A few people said they were busy and they'll be joining next week. But that's the, the great thing about doing webinars. Hey, mom, how are you? I'm just so excited. I felt such a glory today on this webinar and God has just been giving me revelation um, about joy all day long. So I'm just ecstatic to see what God's going to do through each one of you. Each one of these webinars are designed to help you grow in your relationship with the Lord. And I prophetically get before the Lord and I pray and I don't move from the face of the Lord until I hear what topic I'm supposed to teach on. I know some people just pick a topic and step out in faith, but that's just not how I'm wired. I, I really sit before the Lord and I say, what is the next webinar I need to do? Hey, Jody, I'm so excited. People are still signing up and I just am honored and privileged to partner with, with everybody to see you birthing in this season. That's what I'm excited about. Hey, Angie, how are you? Excited to see you guys again. I, I've really been missing my webinars so I was so excited when the Lord told me um, the topic for today. And, and it just, it's so funny today. I just found this glory feather um, shawl. And I thought that was really cool because this is just going to be a glory full of, uh, a webinar full of his glory. And um, I'm just going to do some impartation with you guys as well. You know, one of the things you do when you sew into this webinar, you get impartation. And I just want to honor you guys and thank you for sewing and um, some people are still logging in. I'm going to do a few more um, minutes of update, and then I'm going to just dive into the teaching. I just got back from a Roar conference in Pennsylvania with Charlie Champ and Joshua Mills and uh, Prophet Kirby. And they each, there were 12 sessions, guys, 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 7 o'clock. And they each um, did their impartation. Joshua Mills um, prayed for all of us with his oil. He had a bottle of oil that he's been anointing people in different states. And it has never ran out. It was just supernaturally um, always there. I thought that was pretty cool that God spoke to him to anoint everybody in Pennsylvania with this oil. So I just want to let you guys know that you're also going to get a fresh impartation, not only from this webinar, but for going to the conference. You know, Charlie prayed for us. And... Um, Kirby, you could just feel impartation in the atmosphere. So that's that's just one of the things I'm going to impart to you guys at the end. And if you have any questions, um, like I said, this is an interactive webinar. A lot of you guys have been on my webinars before. And I'm just so excited to see people grow. And I know each one of you in the different levels that you're growing in the Lord. So the next four weeks, I'm actually after this webinar. Um, I love you guys. I know each one of you very well. And uh, I'm actually going away to be with the Lord alone for a couple days. Um, somebody's given me a space for free just to, to get alone with the Lord for three days. So um, I appreciate any prayers because everything that's going to birth out of my alone time um, over the next couple days will be coming into this webinar series as well. So appreciate your prayers. And I'm going to get started. I just want to dig into this um, webinar. There's a few things that the Lord... Um, wanted me to lead you through in prayer before we start carving out a realm in joy. And um, one of the things I love about Patricia King, you guys probably know her very well. I'm going to get ordained by her in June. But she says, wherever you conquered something, you carved it out. Wherever you conquered something, you carve it out. So you can actually carve out a realm of his glory, of his joy, because you really can't separate the two because in Psalm 16 11 I know I'm getting ahead of myself the fullness of joy the word says the fullness of joy is in his presence so it's hard to separate the two so one of the things we're going to talk about in this webinar is how to access the glory and um, some of you may know this very well but I'm gonna just declare that you go to a deeper level but let me pray real quick before we get started because I just I just want to invite Holy Spirit and just honor him so Holy Spirit I just thank you for each individual that's logged into this webinar I just invite you to have your way in this webinar we just dedicate this webinar with the blood of Jesus on it and we say Holy Spirit have your way help me to communicate to people in a way that is honoring you that will give them revelation 
that will allow your revelation to just transpire in their mind. I just ask, Lord, we just bind any distractions from their house or surroundings. We just declare that distractions are bound right now. I just ask that you um, just, I, I just see like a, a glory, like a spark starting. I just declare the sparks going to start for each one of you to carve out this realm, that you're going to cultivate it, that you're going to grow in it, and it's going to produce a mighty harvest, a mighty harvest in your life in this up and coming season in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So let's dive into the teaching. Got my coffee right here for you women out there. Got this at Jennifer Vez. You will rise. So I'm just declaring each one of you rises in the glory today. So the main scripture that God gave me for this webinar was Psalm 1611. The fullness of joy is in his presence. And that can mean um, it's very multifaceted. You could say it has many different levels. That's what multifaceted means. But think about fullness. Like, let me use my water cup. The fullness of joy is in his presence. So when you're separated from his presence, your fullness just diminishes. Let's just say you're busy, you're working, you haven't had your time with God I'm just being real. You, let me think of some real life stuff. Let's just say nobody's perfect until we're in glory. You had an argument with your husband. You had a really busy 60 hour work week and that kind of depleted you. And so your level of joy could be down here. And that could be not that you meant it to happen, but let's just say it's a really tough week. And then let's just say the dog, I don't know, peed all over your carpet right when you get home. So then you subtract it more. And that's the analogy that a lot of people don't understand. So how do you get that fullness of his presence back? And that's what I want to go over in you in the webinar so that he can just shoot and fill your cup all the way back up and you can actually stay and live out of that realm. Now, I do want, I know a lot of you guys are readers. Um, I do want to share some glory books that I think may help you. Um, as we're studying joys, we're studying the fullness. Um, there's glory books by Ruth Heflin. She is one of the greatest writers on the glory realm. And Jennifer Bez just had a glory book out. And um, I just want you to be able to cultivate. Um, I know some other people read Ruth Heflin already on the last webinar. But if you haven't heard of her, she will help you um, go, dive into deeper realms. So I always try to recommend really good resources that kind of touch base with what I'm teaching on. But um, <laughs> you have to make it a lifestyle. The Lord's showing me to carve out a realm of joy. It has to be a lifestyle. You have to make a decision. It's not like, oh, I'm going to wake up and I'm just going to have joy and da 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 da. And it's just going to come naturally because things happen. You, we're busy. You know, you have to work on your marriage or you have to work with your kids or your job or or responsibilities elsewhere, or you're coaching the soccer team, or whatever it is. So you have to wake up every day and just say, I declare Psalm 1611. So that's one of the challenges I would give you during this webinar to speak this as soon as you wake up, because you're naming your day. There's a lot of books out about naming your day, that Psalm 1611 has taken place. Write it on your mirror. I know a lot of people, I know you had this, Mom, um, a lot of people write on their mirror different verses for different seasons. So I would just challenge you for the month of April, it means birthing. And it's such a strategic time for the webinar. But write on your mirror, Psalm 1611, the fullness of joy is in his presence. Or just write, take a little note card and write it on your car. And just start speaking that, speaking that. Because you're procreating with God as you prophesy the word. You're bringing it to pass in your life. Um... It's an access point. The access point of joy overflows out of you as you get connected with him. That's why it says the fullness of joy is in his presence. So what automatically brings you joy? It's God's presence. It doesn't matter what happened in your day, what happened in your week, what kind of year you've had. When you access God's presence, you unlock a joy that the world can't understand. And as we press into this, I know there's a lot of things I'm going to say over and over again, but it's very strategic because the Holy Spirit wants you to understand. You can carve out a realm of joy. 
it, it's possible. And that's why he gave me the specific name for this webinar to be able to carve it out. I know also as well, as you're meditating on the scriptures, you're getting in God's presence. I know a lot of you during your quiet time, you probably feel that peace that passes all understanding. You probably feel that joy bubbling up, but you're not sure how to go to the next level of joy. And that's one of the things that we're going to touch base um, about this. I just know the Lord's showing me that I just break off any fear that you can't right now. I just come against any fear that, that has came. Just come into agreement, renounce that thing that you cannot enter this realm of joy because that is a lie. We just say we don't agree with you. We agree with the word says you have the mind of Christ and the fullness of joy is in his presence. Another um, obstacle you could say to joy is unthankfulness. If you find yourself getting unthankful or criticalness. And if you do, this, this is not a guilt or condemnation. You just repent. You're righteous. You're not a sinner. You're righteous even though you sin, but it doesn't make you a sinner. So you are completely righteous. You just confess, Lord, I've been unthankful or I've been really critical lately. And I, I see my joy level because when you're critical or when you're um, not thankful to your cup, it, let's just say it started out this full in the God's presence in the morning. And you're just critical and your attitude gets worse and then you want to kick the dog and you want to yell at your neighbor and you just it just cycles it just cycles and it's like a depleter because it's the opposite of the character and nature of god and i'm not here to condemn anybody i know uh, we all have to strive every day to stay in the attitude of thankfulness but it's possible to carve out this realm and one of the things you can also do as you get in your shower i want to give practical things that you can do throughout your day Everybody takes all these classes, all this stuff, and they learn and they study. But what do they come out of it practically? That's what I really want to narrow down for you guys. So number one, we talked about making the note card and speaking that verse the whole webinar every day. Just speak it or type it in your phone or play it back to you. That's really um, what the Holy Spirit showed me. Some of you guys need to just speak it in your iPhone where it does the messages where it will actually speak that verse over you and I just see things shifting as you do that it, and it's so awesome to know that Holy Spirit wants you to have practical ways to be able to get in his presence um, another option you can do when you get in the shower each morning or bath or whatever you do is to sing to the Lord for 20 minutes sing to the Lord it's so funny as I, as I began to talk about the subject and prepare this stuff for the webinar a lot of people were talking about joy um, Joshua Mills Jane Hammond it just seems like it was you know we prophesy in part and everybody has their peace and one of the things that the Joshua Mills that really touched me at this conference is God gives him a new song for when he's doing a new thing and um, I just honor honor what he said and I, I just wanted to share it as part of this webinar that he um, starts singing he finds a melody to the radio, whatever your favorite song is, and this is the way he does it. He sings la la la, la la la, and he just follows the tune, and then he switches. If you have your prayer language, and he prays in the spirit for five or ten minutes, he's singing, singing in the spirit, just whatever melody, and then God gives him a scripture, and he sings it out. And that's how he's experienced great breakthrough. And, and I just thought it was right in line with this webinar because you could sing in his presence this fullness of joy. And God may add more of that to you as you're singing in the shower or you're driving to work. That's a great time to just sing unto the Lord because if you studied any of quantum physics, I'm not going to get in great detail. There's tons of books out there. It can be really complicated. But the gist of it is light and sound have power and energy. So as you're singing, those vibrations are actually inviting God's presence because that's how we get. To, if you look, I'm like, I'm like somebody's very visual on here because God keeps giving you visions. All right, let's just say this is the throne room of God. And let's just say my notes here um, are your voice. This is the throne room of God and this is your voice. As you sing, you're given room for their heaven to just come down and touch you. You're allowing God's presence, God's power 
to just invade your life. So the more you sing, the more you worship, you're actually switching your frequency into the realm of joy, which attracts. There's so many worldly books about this, that positivity and all this stuff attracts wealth, attracts this and attracts that and has a different frequency. And yes, that's all true. But I like to stand in the biblical aspect of it is joy is your breakthrough. Joy it gives you the upward glance to be able to stare at heaven and say, what are you doing in my life? If, if anything else out of this webinar, if you get into a realm of joy and you've been stuck in one area, I, I just see that if you sing this out, if you sing it before the Lord, don't get up till you get your answer. Don't get up till you get your answer. I don't care if it's a health issue, if it's a relationship issue. I just see testimonies coming out of this webinar where you've had breakthrough in singing. Because one of the things singing also does is it keeps your mind off the natural. Because we are kingdom people. We're not natural people. But when life hits you in all directions, one of the things it tries to do, and one of the reasons he told me to do this webinar, is many people are birthing glory. And the enemy, and they're in the glory is the joy. And the enemy wants to steal your joy in the process of transition. So I believe even by signing up for this webinar that you're birthing something new in your life. And this is going to be your protection strategy. I don't care what happens over the next four weeks. You are going to carve out a realm of joy. You're going to access it. You're going to sustain it. And you're going to have victory in this area because you're going to apply these principles every day to where you can have personal breakthrough in the area that you've been asking the Lord. I really want you to get a piece of paper and write down number one, write your verse down or play it on your phone. Number two, I want you to sing. I want you to sing. You're not here to win a Grammy. You know, you're just here to sing unto the Lord. I want you to commit to singing 10 or 20 minutes a day or, you know, 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes before bed and ask the Lord for a verse while you're singing to sing out because then you're releasing a frequency and sound of heaven. And I also want you to um, write down on a piece of paper, what is the question that you have for the Lord? And you don't have to do it right now, because I know that's distracting you when you're trying to focus on learning and taking notes because you have the replay. But I want you to ask the Lord, what is it that is robbing my joy? That's question number two, because he's going to show you. He's going to show you. And as you understand yourself, there, there's some real practical things to self-awareness. No, we don't worship ourselves. We don't have the unbiblical view of self-awareness. But if you can understand the way you're thinking, then you can align that, renounce it, and come in alignment with God. So if God says, this is what's robbing you of your joy, oh my gosh, I never known that. Something that simple, I need to shift my process on and you flip the light switch on of joy, something that simple. So I, I think Holy Spirit is, is cultivating a relationship with you. He doesn't just want me to teach at you. He wants me to co-labor with you and give you tools that invite you to make a relationship with him because I can't help you. All I can do is just teach you, but he's the one that can co-labor and transform your life. And so as you have these questions and you sit down with him, he will give you very specific answers and it may surprise you. It may surprise you, you know, say, okay, I'm just using an example. Okay, God, one area I need a breakthrough in is finances. What's hindering this? Or what is my next steps? I don't understand. I want you to sing that song, depress into the realm of joy, because that really moves the barriers to you hearing God as well. One of the things that rob you of hearing God is the distractions of everything in the world that just stress. Let's be honest. You know, um, one of the things we're, we're taking of Joan Hunter, she curses the root of any stress in your life. So I just curse the root of any stress in your right in your life and declare that thing to dry up, that it's going to be a well of joy instead of stress. But just think about this water as is as people. Um, deplenish you and your your presence gets waned and you've been even in ministry i've seen this happen in ministry guys you just give out and you give out and you start doing stuff out of duty and you're giving out just like i took a drink of that you're giving out you're pouring out yourself you have to get that singing worship 
you have to get back to your first love your first love of when you got saved and, and it separates you from works because people can do works but not have any presence of God and any joy. But you go to church every week and you read your Bible, but the joy is missing because then it's become more about works than just offering up your heart and say, God, I just give you my full heart. I want to know the fullness of your joy. I want to be the one that has the victory and carves out a realm of joy. Because if you have a realm of joy carved out, the people in your life, your family members, your spouse, your children, the people you work with, they're going to notice something's different about you. And it could give you the very opportunity to share the love of God because they're going to be like, man, you know, they could know some of your personal stuff thinking, how could they be so happy? They've had this going on and that going on, but you could say, but my God. And also as you carve out this realm of joy, you're going to give the room for the Lord to invite you to a very intimate place. That's one of the things that is really feel on this webinar that the Lord's inviting you to a place of intimacy because let's face it, we're all are overcoming and we're all at different levels in our growth. We're all at different times in our growth, but God, God is the answer to everything. And part of that is allowing yourself to experience his presence, to experience it. It is imperative in the birthing process. That's what the Lord told me. Um, just think about a pregnant mother. Um, she's expecting, she's full of joy. She just said, oh my gosh, I'm going to have a baby. This is so exciting. I don't know whether it's going to be a boy or girl. Oh man, I'm just so expecting. So you're in the birthing process and you're expecting. But meanwhile, while the mother's pregnant for nine months, you know, her feet are swollen. She has weight gain. She may have morning sickness throwing up the first three weeks. You know, she may have food aversions that are really weird. She may be up all night and can't sleep. But think about it. The mother doesn't focus on all the issues. But when she is walking and carrying that birthing and that new thing in the spirit realm, I'm talking about a spiritual birthing, a new gift. And I'm just going to declare birthing dreams, very specific dreams to, to, for God to instruct you in the night season um, during this time. But think about it. The mom carries the baby for nine months and all she is is full of expectation. And that's how God wants you to be during this time of transition. This time he's preparing you for birthing. He wants you to be full of the same expectation that a mother is full of. So when all that, the other stuff, the distractions and the, and the cares of this world and, and the challenges of jobs or finances or relationships start coming at you, I want you to switch your eyes and say, okay, I know I'm birthing something. This is really tough right now. I don't understand even all that I'm birthing, but I know that if I create a realm of joy in God's presence, it doesn't matter what I'm facing. I make room for whatever I need by creating an atmosphere of glory. You will make a room for your breakthrough. It doesn't matter if it's a sickness. It doesn't matter if it's a relationship. It doesn't matter. Um, during the times of birthing and transition, you want to keep the atmosphere also permeated with joy. Permeated with joy. I don't care if you're having just a crummy week and you decide to sing 20 minutes at lunch, 20 minutes at breakfast, 20 minutes at dinner, 20 minutes at snack. If this is what it takes, I, I don't know, some of you are at different pressures at different levels, but if this is what it takes to carve out your new realm of joy, I mean, it's funny, the Lord at different times, he'll just tell me to sing, and it's usually when I least expect it or feel like it. You know, the Bible talks about bringing before the Lord a sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of praise. So most of the time, like when I was at a conference this weekend, and I'd already done hours of worship and was just slammed and, and just had multi things going on. I woke up in the morning and um, was trying to rush and get ready. And the Lord just said, sing to me. I just want you to sing to me. And he knows what we need. He knows. So allow your eyes, allow the joy to keep your eyes on the vision. That's what the joy does. Your, your joy actually allows you to stay focused on your vision. And I, I know I'm going really fast here. Man, we're already 25 minutes in here. So I just want to stop 
Um, I know I've covered a lot of information and just see if anybody has questions. Um, I don't want to teach at you. I want to, to allow you to answer the questions. If I don't have the answers right now, I'll ask Holy Spirit or we'll cover them on the next webinar. So do you have any questions about anything that I, I've said about carving out joy or any feedback? Um, any of you guys? I'll just give you a second to ask. I don't want to go too fast for you guys. I'm just so full, so full to see what God's going to do in your life. Is this hitting home for for some of you guys? Just you feel like you're in the birthing spiritually and and you're not sure what it looks like, but you know you've had some. Oh, man, Lord, I just released the glory. As they're thinking of their questions, I just felt a fresh wave of glory come on me. Whoa. So I just released that over everyone on this webinar right now, that they would just feel your heavy, weighty glory, and it would bring such a rest to them. It would bring such a rest. So we just shift our atmosphere. We pull the weight off. We pull off the cares of this world. We just pull off any worry or stress. Worry and stress traumatizes the soul. So we just command any trauma off from worry and stress. And we just ask the Lord would just sweep over with a fresh oil. Whoa, that they would fill it in their living rooms. That their spouses would fill it. That their house would just have a fresh presence. Fresh presence. In Jesus' mighty name. All right. No questions. I just want to make sure my feedback's working. Everybody good for me to keep going. Um be expected be expectant when you're worshiping and joy i want you to have some expectation not just hope not just wishing but ask god 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 loves our hearts to be pure say god i, I need something to be expectant to what would you have me to be expecting this season what new scripture verses would you like me to research about joy what new I, I just really sense a new thing coming in each one of your life so you have to all of our walks are very different in, in different assignments so you really have to ask the lord what's the new thing that you want me to yield to the holy spirit showing me that to allow the joy to come in its fullness you're going to have to yield to possibly doing things you've never yielded to before that means you have to relinquish all control and I'm not talking about bad, negative, you know, a lot, uh, a lot of people have different areas they try to control. But you say, no, I just repent of any control, have my full heart, Father, and just allow you to show me new areas that you want me to birth new assignments in. I just really sense new assignments. So, Lord, I just declare over here prophetically that you give everyone a new assignment. No matter how small or how impossible or how big or how, how tiny, you want each one of them to birth their new assignments in, the re, in this, even in the regions. I just see new assignments right now. I'm just switching into my prophetic mode, coming into your region. So I just, I just release the angels to, to co-labor to you, to work with you, to minister to you, even for that regional transformation. I just see regional transformation taking place as you get your new assignment wow we just thank you for that lord we just thank you for that <laughs> it just said I, the funny the holy spirit's so funny um it's that even us us human minds we like to figure everything out before we allow ourselves to experience joy and that's not how joy operates. I think um, somebody said this, and, and it really touched my heart. Um, I think it was on that finger of God. I was just looking at the preview, but it really spoke to me. And I think it was worth repeating because I thought it was so cool that sometimes trusting God with your whole heart is even bigger than faith. Because really, he wants that intimacy level. He wants your whole heart. And he doesn't want you to put circumstances on when you'll choose joy. Like, well, God, if you just show me the whole plan and you just lay out everything for me and da 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 and you want all this stuff done before you choose joy, that's not how he wants to flow with you. He wants you to make the choice daily. As the word says, we die daily. We die daily to the things of the flesh. And, and transformation happens in the presence of God. 
transformation. Um, Lord, I just cut off any word curses. Sorry, my prophetic anointing is flowing now, right now. Any false expectations that was put on everybody on this webinar, I just break that off your mind, your heart, your soul. Any control of witchcraft that was released from somebody trying to control your decisions, I just break that. I just ask the glory to wash that away right now. Right now. Whoa. Every word curse. Every witchcraft prayer. People can pray witchcraft prayers about your calling, your gifting without knowing it. They just pray their desire instead of God's desire. So any prayer that's been released over anybody watching this webinar that was not authorized by Holy Spirit, I just break its power over you. And I just declare that you will fulfill everything that God has planned for you in your life. So I would suggest that you journal. Some of you guys I know journal. Some of you don't um but you don't like to journal well you could write notes in your phone if you like to type better because i feel like even as you take this webinar that god's going to individually give you revelation on joy i'm going to teach you my revelation but i i just really feel like god wants to be this a birth and place of intimacy for you so after Let's just say, I'm just using this as an example. You can break it up any way you want. Let's just say you're a night owl and you, um, let's just say your husband goes to bed and you like to stay up. It could be a morning owl. It could be vice versa. So you get out, you write your, you say your scripture and you just sing for a little bit. You, you get your scripture and you start writing out stuff. I think that God's going to speak to you about different things of joy that he wants to make intimate to your heart because I can teach you a revelation all day, all day long. I could give you a scripture. I can give you line upon line. But sometimes it becomes so real as you experience his glory and his revelation coming to you. So even as you ponder just that one scripture on joy, and we're going to go over many, many more scriptures over the next four weeks. But as you ponder these scriptures, I want you to ask Holy Spirit. So if you have a notebook and you're taking notes, you know, question number three, Holy Spirit, what do you want to teach me about joy? Because at the end of the day, he is your teacher. He is your guide. And he may show you things that are very specific to your personality that I may or may not know. And that, that's the great thing about the Holy Spirit, that he can disciple each one of us differently. Things that cause me joy might not you know cause you joy it, it's a different level of his presence or a different way you interact with him because everybody I, I like to say everybody has their different love languages with with god and preferences of, of how he speaks to you um birthing can be messy that's one of the things the lord um wants you to just lean on during um, this season of birth and he wants this joy to be your overfilling and no matter how messy it looks how how stuff doesn't make sense you know you, you feel like it's a, a new gift in the spirit you've had dreams about babies about birthing something new and, and you don't understand it all but you're just looking at the eyes of, the, of your heart that's your true spiritual eyes you're looking with the eyes of the heart and you're saying Lord I know this looks messy just think about in the natural Things in the natural mimic the spiritual. When you have a birthing, there's stuff everywhere when a baby's born. How many of you have experienced labor or been at a birthing with a family, with a friend? It gets messy. But in the process, in this process, in this season for the month of April, he wants you protected. He wants you protected. He wants you to have accountability in this webinar. He wants you to have assignments. Not for me just to give you busy works to do, but because he wants to be in that intimate place in your heart because that's the place of protection. And you don't have, if you don't have the amount of time to sing 20 minutes a day, try five, try 10, try 10 in the morning or three in the morning, whatever your routine is, you can, you can adjust it to whatever's needed. But one of the things I like to do, especially when I need answers, is to just sit there and wait on the Lord. You just pray instrumental music, get your favorite instrumental music, or if you like words, do words. And you're really accessing the glory. Because as you wait on the Lord and you play your music, let's just say you've sung for a while, you've already prayed, and you wait. Just wait. And you can wait five minutes, ten minutes, an hour. It, it's up to you. 
but God will speak to you what he wants you to know in this season. It's, it's a process of waiting on the Lord. It's a privilege, but it, it's so worth it. Everyone I've ever known has gotten such a deep, intimate level with God as they've waited for the Lord. And sometimes people have waited for the Lord for an answer, and God showed up and spoke to them totally about a different subject, totally about a different topic, and it wrecked their life, and it was exactly what they needed. So don't put him in a box. Don't put him in a box this season. It could very well surprise you as you wait on the Lord. So I'm talking about access and the glory. You can be a glory carrier. You have the rights and privilege as the sons of God. Like it talks about in Romans 8, as many as are the children of God are led by the Lord. You are led by the Lord as you sit before his feet and you wait on him. That's what they did at the temple. You know, Samuel and Eli and all, they waited on the Lord. The priests waited on the Lord. And I think sometimes we get in a hurry. We get in a hurry with life. We get in a hurry with, with things going on and we just don't wait on him. And, and, and that, it's vital. I think that's one of the things that I believe David mastered. I believe he waited on the Lord for battle strategies. He waited on the Lord um, how to do the next move. And, and a lot of people have moved prematurely. And, and then it's caused them too much stress. So I think, I think one of the things of, of harboring joy is understanding God's perfect timing. That's perfect timing to move into the next thing. Even as you transition in birth, you'll have a knowing in your knower realm. You'll just know that you know that you know when it's time to move on, when it's time to jump into something new. And, and it could be um, totally different than what you're used to. I just release the glory. It's just getting so thick in here. I just continue to wash over their hearts, over their mind, release any inner healing, any wounds, Lord, that, that could rob their joy, any rejection, any heartache, heartbreak, any loss, any grief. I just ask the, the oil of gladness, the oil of gladness to just visit them, that you just pour out your new wine on them, that you just you just allow the Holy Spirit to just fill you, that you could just drink upon him. The, the Bible says living waters flow out of your belly. So sometimes you just have to drink by faith if you don't know how to feel the presence of God and just say, Lord, I just drink of your river. I just drink of your river and I just access it by faith and I ask you to fill me up. I'm dry. I'm weary. I've been going through some stuff. Help me to drink of your river. Help me to drink. And as you keep asking in that and you keep pressing into that, you will feel his new wine, his new wine in the spirit realm. We're talking about a natural wine. I'm talking about he comes and he just says for all that are thirsty come drink come drink just like it was in the bible with with the woman at the well you know he has our he is our well he wants us to drink from him just like the samaritan woman did he, he spoke the desires of her heart to her and, and that's the place of intimacy that god wants you to cultivate and as you get more intimate with god your joy joy grows because you know, if God is for you, who can be against you? If God is for you, who can be against you? So if God is for you and nobody can be against you, there's no problem. There's no thing that is too big that you cannot overcome with the Father in heaven. And he wants you to know that. He wants that intimate place that you know that you trust God with your whole heart, that he is worthy of trust. Just and, and just be honest with them. Just say, Lord, a lot of people I know have been abused by by authorities and just terrible things have happened. Just say, Lord, I repent that I judged you and your trustworthiness based on my dad or or based on this person that betrayed me or hurt me or, or based on abuse. I repent. I just trust you with my whole heart, my whole heart. I just. Do that prophetic act. Just say, Lord, I just repent for any area I have not trusted you in. And I want joy in this area. Just take it and just do a prophetic act and just release your heart to him. Just say, Lord, here's my heart. I want to love you with my whole heart. I want to experience your presence with my whole heart. And I just want the fullness of joy in my whole heart. And I, I, just, I just see such a fruitfulness coming out of you guys. As, as this builds and as this grows, joy creates a fortress, a fatness in the spirit. 
it attracts the Holy Spirit. When you start singing, and it attracts the angels. The angels that people don't want to talk about it, but they they are so needed and they're so necessary. They were meant to serve us. God created them to help us on this earth. And if Jesus needed angelic help, so do I. So it just as you create that realm of joy, as you carve it out, as you worship, you you have the fatness, the oil, the Holy Spirit. You may just feel the anointing just coming all over you. You know, and you could feel a hundred different things. You know, the Holy Spirit could show off to you in a hundred different ways. You feel you could feel wind. You could feel laughter. I know at the meeting I was just drunk on the Holy Spirit, fell on the floor, and probably laughed for an hour. And and half the congregation was laughing. It was just that much of God's presence in there, and that happens, and that can happen alone in your bedroom. You can just get so full from worshiping God, so full from the joy that you can have breakthrough, you can experience deliverance, anything you need, just laughing in the face of your enemies. It creates a freshness. It creates an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to invade. Just think about that. As you align yourself with the atmosphere of heaven, because joy is the atmosphere of heaven. There's a lot of books that people have written about going to heaven and coming back to earth. And they've seen plants sing and they, they've seen vibrations and grass and all these sounds, all these colors. I mean, just amazing, like Anna Roundtree, um, just multiple authors on heaven. But it actually creates the atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to invade your car invade your work wherever you're at doesn't matter that the joy opens up that realm so it can allow the presence of god and that's when you start seeing that's when you start seeing in the spirit when you're worshiping and you start getting these very faint impressions your imagination realm you know the lord everybody says oh no that's new age no it's not new age copied us we are the original we access the spirit realm through jesus christ we are made to be heavenly beings beings it's not new age to use your imagination to see pictures when i prophesy and when i release words to people i see the faint imaginations in my heart i see the word pictures in my heart it's my imaginatory realm and as you grow that and you release that and you let it out you become more and more prophetic that and you get more and more sharp and you start recognizing those faint impressions